Welcome to the Thrive Podcast. If you want to thrive in your life and business while keeping God first, you're in the right place. This is the show for leaders who want to leave a legacy of love, encouragement, and generosity. You want to be remembered for the way you positively impacted the lives of others and made a lasting difference. You want God to order your steps. Sometimes you just need a nudge in the right direction to take those steps. The Thrive Podcast will help you take the right steps, overcome obstacles, and equip you for the kind of success that matters to you. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Even when I spilled a chocolate milkshake all over my brand new yellow dress at the zoo, and telling me that everything was going to be okay. You see, because I was this little girl, and I thought that because I made this big mistake, this big mess, that the one person that I loved the most in my life, my mama, was going to be so disappointed in me because I ruined the very thing that she worked so hard to try to get me to have. But what I learned from that was her response was not, I can't believe you did that. That was so stupid. I can't. Her response was nothing like that. Her response was only love. She valued me more than stuff. And I don't know who this is for, but somebody needs to hear that because somebody you're going back to your earliest memory of mercy and you didn't get that kind of response. You got the kind of response that said, you're no good. I can't believe you did that. All you do is make mistakes. All you do is mess up. But whatever your past may have been, I want to remind you that God is the lover of your soul. Hallelujah. And that he makes all things new. All things new. So I just want to encourage you with that, that God loves you for who you are. Not for what you do, not for the mistakes that you may have made. God loves you for you, not for your performance. Now I'm going to get into the word of God here, but I hope that encourages somebody on tonight. So, uh, I want to give you a message of hope and a message of encouragement. Go with me to Psalm 139 verse 14, Psalm 139 verse 14. And when you have it, say amen. I want somebody to stand and read that for me, please. Somebody stand and read that. Let's go back to the old time way. The way we used to do it in Bible study back in the day. Amen. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. And the scripture was, I will praise thee. Thank you. Beautiful. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. All right. So let me just stop here for a moment and say we are living in a time where many people are searching for their identities. Even in the church, people who are wrestling with who they are not knowing who exactly they are. People who are searching for purpose or meaning inside of something or someone else. And we're living, all you have to do is get on YouTube and see that we're living in a time where there are carbon copies everywhere and people are longing for real truth. Somebody say real truth, real truth. Type in the chat, real truth, real truth. We're living in a time where we are bloated with information at our fingertips, but we are starved for wisdom. My, my, my. In tonight's lesson, I'm going to unpack ways that you can embrace your uniqueness and walk in the power of your original design. Will you say, well, Lady J, you didn't give me a title for tonight. Well, here you go. Title for tonight is Original by Design. Write that down. I'm original by design. Original by design. We're going to talk about embracing your divine blueprint. And then, if we have enough time, we'll use the story of Hannah and Penina in, in, in 1 Samuel uh, 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 to help guide us out of complacency and provoke us to purpose. So 139, while well, Psalm 139 says, I will praise thee for I am what? 
Say it like you mean it this time. I will praise thee because I am what? There you go. You sound like you believe it now. That word original means that you are not secondary. There is only one you. There is no derivative. There is no imitation. You are the real thing. You can go buy a fake Gucci bag if you want to, but if you put the two bags beside each other, one is going to last for one year and the other is going to last for 50. Tell somebody I'm the original. I'm the original. The word blueprint, somebody said, I know what you're talking about. (laughs) The word blueprint means a guide for making something or a detailed plan of action. I was listening to Rabbi Daniel Lappin and and listen to this poem real quick. He says, for it isn't your father or mother or wife who judgment you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the guy staring back in the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you clear up to the end and you've passed your most dangerous, difficult test if the guy in the glass is your friend. You can fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the guy in the glass. That's by Dale Wimbro. So speaking of being original and being authentic to yourself, I'll tell you a quick story. I happen to love strawberries. Anybody that knows me well knows I love strawberries. And I remember one time I got home early from work and I just had a taste for some strawberries. So thankfully I had some in the refrigerator and I remember going there and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to sprinkle a little sugar on these strawberries because I don't know about you, but I like my fruit real sweet. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, It doesn't need any added sugar. It doesn't need any added sugar. And in that moment, I thought to myself, wow, I was adding something that I thought needed to be there when it was already sweet enough. God spoke to me in that moment and said, you already have it inside of you. Some of you are trying to add extra stuff, extra things, extra this, extra that, extra approval from this one and that one. You don't need anything extra. You already have it inside of you. Tell somebody, be you. And use the God, use the gifts God has given you. Listen, baby, you don't have to be like everybody else. Can I teach tonight? Be the best version of yourself. Be the best version of yourself. You won't be for everybody and that's okay. You have to be for the people that God has sent you to. Amen. I heard Bishop Dale Bonner say, don't change your gift. Find an audience who has an appreciation for your gift. You come to Bible study tonight, you want me to hoop up and tune up and everything like that? I'm not going to do that. Why? Because that's not my lane. I stay in my lane. And too many saints are getting out of your lane and you're not in alignment with your divine assignment because you're trying to be not the original. God has made you an original. Tell somebody, be you, be you, be you, yes. Mm -hmm. Can I teach tonight? Mm -hmm. never ask somebody who is spiritually blind to proofread your vision okay I'll say it again type that in the chat (laughs) never ask somebody who is spiritually blind to proofread your vision God has shown you what he's gonna do God has shown you great things that are coming in your life and if you're asking someone what they think about your future who has had no time in the prayer closet who has had no time writing down the prayers and hearing what God listen they won't be able to see it baby you need to talk to somebody that has clear vision ask somebody do you have 2020 do you have 2020 I need somebody who's in alignment I feel the. (laughs) It's, it's the joy of the Lord tell somebody be the original All right. All right. All right. So speaking of original, let's go to first Samuel, first Samuel chapter one, first Samuel chapter one. I need a reader, a strong, loud reader, read verses. Uh, uh, let me see here. Read verses 
three through five, real quick. Three through five, first Samuel chapter one, verses three through five. Anybody? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Three through five. five. And this man went up out of his city yearly Uh to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Yes. And the two sons of Eli, Mm -hmm. Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, Mm-hmm. He gave to Peniah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters mm-hmm. portions. Mm-hmm. But unto Hannah, yes. he gave a worthy portion. Uh huh. For he loved Hannah. Mm-hmm. But the Lord has shut up her womb. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Excellent. All right. What are we talking about today? Being the what? Original. Being the original. Now, in this text, we see that Elkanah had had, had two wives. Look at somebody and say, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. All right. So Elkanah had two wives. Uh, uh, and he would show favoritism to Hannah, giving her a double portion whenever he would go up to offer sacrifices in Shiloh. And in turn, Penina was jealous and constantly taunted Hannah about her inability to have children. So Penina was less favored than Elkanah's other wife, Hannah. Although she had borne him children and Hannah was childless. You know the story. Penina also brought grief and disharmony to the, the, to the household by mocking Hannah because she didn't have any children. Now we know that Hannah's story is a powerful one of courage, of strength, and a persistent prayer. But Hannah had to be the original because she constantly had Penina up in her face. Jealous Penina, backbiting Penina, lying Penina, can't see the vision Penina in her face, blocking her from what God had her to do. So Hannah had to be unwavering in her commitment to seek God's faith. Tell somebody, seek his face, seek his face. So despite her challenges and her feelings of rejection and abandonment, some of you have felt that way too. She didn't stop praying. So today in these next few moments, I just want to help push you out of complacency. I've come to help awaken the giant within you, the original giant within you, because some of you know that your life is meant for more than you're doing right now. We are already nearly at the end of January. You made some New Year's resolutions just simply one month ago, and you said, God, this has to be the year that it happens for me. So I'm here to push you out of complacency so that it can happen. But in order for it to happen, you've got to identify the paninas in your life. Uh huh. You can live your whole life being complacent and even surrounded by people who say it's okay for you to be complacent. You see, Elkanai was, uh, uh, he favored Hannah. He loved Hannah and he felt kind of so so towards P- Penina. And so Hannah could have become complacent in just receiving the double portion, but she knew she was meant for more. She knew she had to push for more. And Elkanai, with his egotistic self said aren't I enough for you than a 10 sons and she said man I love you but this is my heart's desire I love you but this is the vision God has shown me I love you but I know my life is meant for more I have a haunting, nagging suspicion that it's going to take some tears for some of you. Some time in your prayer closet. I call mine my war room. I love Priscilla Shire in the war room. It's going to take some tears, some praying, some writing down your prayers on your prayer cards. Keeping this. This card is from nearly 20 years ago and I still have it. So I have a memory. Yeah, it's going to take some tears to break the yoke of complacency that's been over your life. I don't think you are a mistake, and I know you're not here by accident. 
I don't care what the circumstances of your birth were. You are here for a reason and you're here for such a time as this. You are not too old. You are not too young. You are not too broke. You are not too lazy. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But you got to believe that. You got to believe it. I can't believe it for you. You got to believe it for yourself. You are an asset to this world, young woman. You are an asset to this world, man. Watch what you say to yourself when you are by yourself. What are you saying? You encourage everybody else, but you're beating yourself up. Speak words of life to yourself when you're by yourself. In the bathroom, in the kitchen, getting dressed, in the car. You've got to speak life to yourself. So real quick, real quick, let me give you some warning signs uh, that you become complacent in being the original. Since this is Bible study, let me give you some warning signs. Number one, you're no longer striving to be your best. You've entered a place of judgmentalism rather than pushing for excellence. Fatigue is your biggest distractor. You're constantly scrolling. You're constantly looking at what everybody else is doing with their life instead of doing what God called you to do with your own. You can't neglect your now for your next. Take some time to focus on what God has called you to do. Stop looking at what everybody else is doing. Be inspired by them. Yes, there's nothing wrong with gaining inspiration from others, but don't allow that inspiration to cause you to be in a place of comparison that puts you in a place of stagnancy because you're constantly looking at how far ahead somebody else is and where you should be. Comparison is the thief of joy. Number two, warning that you become complacent. You're operating off of an old playbook. I hope you're taking notes. Somebody type these in the chat for me. Number one was that you're no longer striving to do your best. Number two is that you're operating off of an old playbook. You've got to be a lifelong learner in this church. Not just in this church, but on your job. I have a staff of 12, and one of the things I tell them is that you've got to constantly be learning and equipping and growing yourself. It's not enough just to graduate. You've got to do what? Constantly get training and constantly go to conferences and and develop your mind. Would you want a doctor to operate on you who say, yeah, I graduated in 1960, haven't taken a course since, but I sure don't know how to work that fax machine. (laughs) So be a lifelong learner, right? All right. Number three, you aren't taking advantage of new opportunities. You've got to sharpen your ear. You got to take advantages of opportunities to keep learning, to keep growing, to keep stretching, to keep exercising. Ladies, sweating the spirit is Thursday at 12 noon. Join me. (laughs) I'm serious. At, at, At Annex 5, I would love to have you. And then finally, number four is you aren't maintaining and building new relationships. The quality of your relationships really does determine the quality of your life. If you still have the same friends and the same old Rolodex that you had back in grade school or high school and you're not developing any new friendships, who have you told lately about the gospel of Jesus Christ? How are you learning and developing for them? So Hannah had it made and everything would be fine if it wasn't for that girl Penina, the ministry of Penina. There is more possible for you in your life. So Sometimes you had to thank God for your penina. Hannah didn't realize that her purpose was hidden behind her problem. See, see what happened was, was penina provoked Hannah to purpose. She pushed her to her prayer room. She pushed her to pray. Listen, some people God sends in your life solely to get on your nerves. Hello, lights. Can I get an amen from the lights? Because what? It develops your character. uh, uh, They are there to help save you from mediocrity. They are there in some cases to provoke you to jealousy. They are there to in some cases to show off that God has something more for you. And if you're not careful, you will acquiesce into becoming their hater rather than allow them to become your stimulator. Okay, I need to stop. We're almost at our time. Maybe we'll do a part two. I don't know. 
So, so, so listen, you, 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 you've got to get in a place where you say, God, why a- ask yourself, why is it whenever I get around him, I get uncomfortable? Why is it whenever I see that post on Facebook about starting her business and things are just growing and flourishing, I get uncomfortable. I want to unfollow. Why is it that I get a little, whew, One of the greatest things of leaders, we're just coming back from the leadership conference. One of the greatest things that leaders have is the ability of self-awareness. If you are going to be an effective leader, not only in the church, but also in the marketplace, you have got to be self-aware. You heard the story, the emperor has no clothes, right? Right. You've got to be the one that knows Hey, I'm not the best in this area. So one of the things I tell my team members is to hire your weaknesses and develop other leaders. A great leader is self-aware, is self-aware. Now, whenever God has a great purpose in your life, he will put a great problem in front of you. So it's important that you find that giant. What is that Penina in your life? Know this, that Goliath is simply the gateway to the next dimension. Because as soon as you get over that, you're getting ready to walk into what God has for you. So stop shrinking from Goliath. Stop running from Penina. Ask yourself, God, why do I feel this way when these things come into my life? What are you trying to show me? And in many cases, God is trying to tell you, I want you to be the original version of yourself. You don't have to be a carbon copy of anybody else. I have made you marvelous. You are beautiful in my sight. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. And this my heart knows full well. Amen. All right, clap your hands, give God praise. I had to cut it short. I have a ton more content on that. But I want to, of course, honor uh, our pastor and the time that we have. Everybody's standing. Will you stand? We're going we're gonna to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching online, I'm just going to ask that you lift your hands or just put an emoji in the chat, uh, lifting hands or, write, or type praying praying and everybody here in the sanctuary just lift your hands father i thank you for every leader in this house i thank you for every influencer in this house i thank you for what you're doing in their life and father i pray that you would help them this year to not only accomplish the goals that you have put in their heart but i i pray that you would allow them to experience happiness and joy unspeakable as they become the most original version of themselves. Help them to realize that being the original does not mean perfection. It simply means being the best version of who you have called them to be. Father, we thank you that the blueprint for our life is already destined. We thank you that you are doing great things and that you're doing it right now. And God, as we pray, we pray for our pastor. We thank you for touching his body. We thank you for making all things new we thank you for doing a new thing even in his life father we thank you for all those who may be going through any type of sickness father and we ask for your healing power to be upon them right now in the name of Jesus we thank you and as a sign of our thanking you we clap our hands and we say thank you Lord it is so in Jesus name amen and amen I love you all so much with the love of the Lord Ah. It's your time. Are you a coach, entrepreneur, or leader? Are you someone who wants to keep God first in your business? Well then, it's your time to shine. Join the exclusive mastermind of world-class leaders inside Thrive, led by Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Get ready to clarify your purpose, amplify your strengths, and thrive financially from what you already know. Sign up today at Javana.com. That's J-E-V-O-N-N-A-H dot com.